Hello, good morning. So uh, hello, Denise, and thank you for checking in over in the chat. It's nice to see you here. Um, so I spent yesterday afternoon getting a webcam uh, hooked up. And so I'm excited that hopefully I won't have quite as many um, issues as I had on Facebook. And this is my first time doing a live on YouTube. So thank you for being here. Uh, today, I'm talking about Okro Square, which I have behind me. Yay! Uh, the getting started uh, videos that I did on Facebook live, I'm going to go ahead and re-record hopefully this weekend with the cutting instructions and stuff like that. So people are joining in, uh, that'll be going up and there's plenty of time to catch up. Also, if people want this as a kit, I saw in the newsletter for Sewing Arts in Santa Monica that they have kits now on the butter milk background. They also have this version of it. And I also have some bolts of this mocha thatched coming in. So I was out of that and uh, it was back ordered and it is shipping to me right now. So I will also be able to make some more kits of that as well. I have some kits that are on my, uh, my shop at Robin Pickens Incorporated um, that are some of the different thatched colorways. The particular colorway I'm doing, I I have to list it. I do have another one of these available as well. Um, I think it says sold out, but I've got to update that. Um, so, uh, and hello, Carolyn. I'm so glad you're here. And I was really excited to see um, your post that you had your, your mushrooms all completely put together. So you're a rock star as always. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of follow-up on leaf press first. Um, I still had some catching up to do with leaf press and I still do on my version using the dark background and these fabrics, but I was making a Christmas version using thatched um, fabrics in reds and uh, creams. Um, I needed to do my little uh, leaves on the stalks and I also needed to do the, the berry um, stalk. What I found when I was doing this one is this particular block. The first time I made this quilt and the second time now I've made this quilt, I've made this mistake. I will get one of these branches flipped upside down. So I have more room in the upper corner and less in the lower. And I had joined the whole stock part when I realized that one of these was flipped upside down. So I will often put in a pattern to look for something if it's something I make a mistake on. I don't know if I did on this one, but I've made that mistake a couple times. So check your directions so that all of your stocks are lining up nicely. Um, also, when I'm adding a thin sashing, I'm usually pressing in towards that so that the seams are laying flatter uh, against something that doesn't have any piecing on it. And on here, the thing you're gonna to wanna to watch out for is when you're joining these pieces together, I'm a little bit off here, I might rip that and um, fix it as I'm going through. That's a good place to pin for accuracy. When I'm making these blocks, I'm going back to all those little stitch and flip corners that I trimmed off and I put into my little bucket for later. I'm going through, I'm finding those, I'm trimming them down you can cut them from the pattern as they're listed, but this is one that I wait to cut because I'm going to reuse a lot of the scraps from the bigger stitch and flip corners that I pulled off earlier and I saved and I made that extra seam. These are going to be the place where they're utilized. Um, same thing with my pressing on here. I am uh, usually pressing one direction when I am trimming my half square triangles. I am uh, pressing in towards any kind of little sashing. I'm letting that take the bulk of my seams and pressing in towards it. The other thing then once on leaf press, so here is my second row. And I intentionally have my blocks flipping upside down and you know right side and downside throughout the quilt so that one direction doesn't um, you know, read as up unless I have directional fabrics and I really want it to read up, but you can decide as you want to do with that. For adding the sashing in between the rows, this is something that 
might be really obvious to a lot of you, but I didn't know about this until someone told me. Thank you, Susan Vaughn. Uh, when you are adding the sashing strips on a long piece like this, right? You want to first, so you want to measure that you have, I do measure my row to make sure that I'm kind of the same measurement that I'm supposed to be on my sashings with my row and that I haven't made my seams like a little bit too fat so that my measurement is in. Um, block step is, not block step, bar hop is one with a lot of seams. And so your row can shrink a little bit. So I really try to um, double check how my seams are on that. Uh, the length for this in the pattern specifies 38 and a half inches, which is what my, my piece measures. Um, I have a long table that I can measure out to 38 and a half inches. I know a lot of you don't have one that long. So in that case, what I'm doing is I'm saying, what's half of 38? It's 19. What's half of half? It's a quarter. So I'm making sure that, that I have my piece folded in half. I'm going from the fold and then on my ruler, you know, I'm going to cut this to 19 and a half with my fold at the end. And that's gonna get me my, or 19 and a quarter, sorry, to get my 38 and a half strip. So when I'm putting this on, I'm going to pin my ends, yeah, pin one end and then pin the other end. I'm going to fold both of these pieces in half so that I get them to hang nice and evenly. I'm gonna find my halfway point and now I'm gonna pin there. And I'm not a big user of pins unless it's putting on sashings. Then I use a lot of pins and I'm a huge fan of them. Same thing here, I'm going to make sure that I'm nice and even. Sometimes it's just a matter of kind of stretching it out and I'm gonna pin in the middle. back of that. And same thing here. I'm going to pin in the middle. So now when I sew on my sashing and on a longer quilt, I'm going to be adding a lot more to these, but it's going to keep me from having it bunch up and not be even throughout the row. So I'm always adding my rows on this way where I am using Pins, I'm going from the ends first, then the center, then the centers, then the centers, and evening it out uh, that way. So um, for those of you who don't know that, like I didn't originally, I hope that helps. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that the next time I'm on here, I will have this top completely joined, which would feel really good. So uh, on to Okro Square. Uh, for this one, it is the week for doing the acorn blocks on background B. So uh, acorns on background B. Uh, last month was, or in, um, yeah, well, I guess it was October um, or September. It was the mushrooms. Uh, you don't have to have them pieced into the center. I do all my piecing um, into the actual blocks and the rows at the end, although sometimes I do like parts of it as I go along. But if you want to jump ahead and like put that together, go for it. Um, I do have all of my mushroom blocks here. Um, the center of my quilt is going to be with the washed linen, then the buttermilk. And so it's a kind of a softer color center. And then I get to the brighter colors on the outside. So I've got my mushrooms that I got finished. And when it comes to cutting the background for the acorns, uh, the pattern does call for a lot of these things where you have um, a lot of one and a half inch squares or a lot of one inch squares. When I cut my strips, that's where I'm really utilizing my stripology ruler a lot. And so I will put this down and just like run through the one inch um, pieces really fast. I also really like to cut the largest sizes first because then what I do is I look at this piece of leftover fabric and I'm going to cut some of these other, let's say squares and things from this leftover piece. And then that's gonna save me fabric as I'm going down. So I do like to cut the bigger pieces, 
then take the ends of those and get some of these smaller pieces out as I can, just for the best efficiency of things. And on this pattern, because it's, you know, with market and other sewing, it's been a while since I looked at it. And so the first thing I did is I said, okay, I'm making acorns. Which fabrics are acorns? Okay, I can see these two fabrics are the acorns. These are the pieces that I'm gonna be cutting. So really easy. I don't have to, you know, look at the rest of the things in here to be cutting that. I make my piles. If I don't want to label all my background pieces, then I will cut them in order and I will stack them in order so that it's easy for me to go through the stack and know sort of where that measurement is because I went in order and I can look on the list and figure out where it is on the stack. So that's just a little tip if you don't label. Uh, as I'm doing my acorns, the first thing I'm going to do with an acorn, there's, there's three sizes of acorns, the large, the medium size and the small. Um, I'm going to make one block in that size so that I make sure that I'm making the correct sized um, acorn and that everything's coming out together because there are different size blocks and backgrounds and like corners. I wanna make one, I wanna measure that block and make sure that like this is coming out the way I want it to be. So, I am making my acorns, once I've made one block and made sure that like my measurements are correct. I usually work, this is my own method and you might have your method, which is, you know, fine, do whatever works for you. But I usually work where I am putting all of my stitch and flip corners onto the bottoms, right? And so I just sew on both ends at the same time. If I'm making too many different sizes at once, I sometimes get a little confused and I'll find that I have sewn it on horizontally as opposed to, let's say, the, the shorter end of the piece, you know, I'll get a little confused. So if I work on one size at a time, it's easier for me to know, like, I'm always putting it on this end. And if I sew these pieces on first and I have them all lined up, I can see right away if I've made a mistake. The same thing with the top of the acorn. I'm putting it on horizontally. I've got the larger piece at the top, the bottom pieces, um, that are smaller at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and just sew all of these on at once before I trim them. So I am able to just chain stitch through the machine to do like one corner, all the other corner, all the bottom corners. And so I end up with a piece that looks like this. Then I'm going to go ahead and just snip my corners. Right, and I would then press these with the iron, but I'm finger pressing for you. So there's my top. So I'm gonna go ahead and an assembly line and make all of the large acorn tops this way. I'm also going to do the same thing where I make all of the stalks and the same thing for the bottoms. I make all of the bottoms. I sew all of the pieces on like this, then I go through and cut them off and press them. All right, so those are gonna be my, my stacks that I have of the three. I add my stem to the top. And again, I do this, all of them at the same time. So I'm not confusing. The big one is at the top, the small one is at the bottom. I wanna make sure because this is gonna match up with the sides here. Also at this stage, I take this piece that I've done for the body of the acorn, and I add the two sides. And it's important that you have to add the two sides now or it's not gonna line up right. So I'm gonna join my top with the stem and I'm going to add my two sides. Then at this point, when I am joining these two together, if I need to, I can put a pin in here to check that my seam is going to line up correctly with the angle. But if you've measured it right, it should line up correctly so that the side of the angle is meeting the side of the acorn. And that is where we are. And my pressing, I am, uh, I pressed these open, they could be pressed in. I press these to the side, I'm pressing these um, seams in between open. Uh, that seems to lay the flattest for me, do what works for you. Um, so after I've made all the big ones, then I'm going to move on and do the same thing with the medium, right? And I'm going to do the same 
assembly line, I'm going to make one block first, make sure that it is the right size on everything. Um, the medium sized blocks also get this extra piece put at the top. So I'm gonna make all of those. And then I'm gonna move on to the small ones. The same thing, I am putting all of my pieces on first. I'm sewing all four corners on. I'm checking that they're all correct and I don't have like too small here or, you know, bigs, it's, it's all this way. After I sew them like this, then I will cut my corners off, press these open. I'm going to add my stem and uh, add the two pieces um, together after I've put the sides on, right? Sides on the bottom. And then that is going to make my little acorn, right? Then I'm adding my top and I'm adding my bottom piece um, because these are smaller, aren't they cute? Um, they need this extra sizing to fit in the row correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just assembly line, do all of those. Uh, you can mix and match the colors as you like because I like to have like a, a logic that I'm sewing by. That's why I usually said, okay, every time I'm doing the darker brown on the bottom, I'm going to do the darker brown on the top. I'm going to make a mirror image of this. And the same with the um, this version with the, the linen and the caramel. I'm going to flip that. And then within my rows, you can mix them as much as you want within the rows, but I usually keep like two color combinations and it's a mirror image on the other side of my row. So if you look at this, like I'm gonna have the, the, uh, the, moon, uh, the moon and leaf print is here and down below, it's also here, right? These, this piece is this one here, this one, with the caramel is the same here. Now, when we move to the sides, it's the flip version of it. So the caramel is now to the outside. This um, moon and leaves is to the outside and these pieces are flipped here. So that way I can kind of keep it mirrored and even, and I know that the prints are going to be evenly distributed around the quilt this way. You can mix them however you like. I just liked the um, kind of logical arrangement of them sort of mirroring each other. And I found it was easier for my brain to arrange them that way, um, especially since this is a medallion quilt. I kind of wanted it to have a certain, you know, feeling of symmetry. So uh, I think that's kind of it is you can go ahead and also, you know, join them side by side into the rows. But really, this is about making the blocks right now. In two weeks, I will be back on, and uh, that's when I'll be going over the row C with the, um, the leaf stalks there and the oak leaves. Um, we'll be making those. And let's see, do I have questions? Um, hi there, Mary. Uh, last time I showed some stickers. I did not get the stickers listed in the shop yet. I'm hoping I will soon. It takes some time to get them listed. Um, because I took some time off for Quilt Market, I wanted to pull more names for people getting stickers. Um, if you weren't there, I have my early bird sewing with the machine. I have the early bird stitcher, um, slow stitch love with a little snail. This is the night owl sewing, which I tend to be pretty good at night owl sewing. Um, the night owl stitching, I'm also good at night owl stitching. And that's a duplicate, uh, Mama Cat the Knitting Queen. Um, so these are the stickers you get to um, pick four stickers for me to send to you. And uh, I'm glad you're on the call. So Carolyn Hoffman, I loved seeing the uh, mushroom block that you had posted in the group. Thank you so much. You also had a bunch of your leaf press blocks with it, but you had your mushrooms there. And I was really excited to see those. Um, I also love seeing your motor blockheads progress um, using the wild blossoms. It's really great. Uh, Paula Brewer, you made your entire Oak Grove square top already and you had it laid out on the bed and your plan for, you know, what color thread you're going to use for quilting. So you get stickers also. I will DM you guys directly um, after this. 
Pam Kasky. Uh, you did a version of the Oak Grove Square and Leaf Press blocks combined. So you made a big block or a big quilt, and it has the personality of both of those coming together in a mixture, which I just thought was super fun. Loved seeing that. Stickers for you. And if, if you guys don't want stickers and you'd rather have a pattern, you can let me know that too. That's, that's totally fine. Um, Valerie Ferguson. Uh, somebody is calling. Valerie Ferguson. Uh, Oak Grove Square Center Block. You had posted, uh, you had it completely filled together. Loved seeing that uh, stickers or pattern for you. Um, Leslie Hassman, you did the traveling leaves. Um, this is the pillow for traveling leaves or as a little mini wall quilt. You did this in fantastic quilting. I loved seeing how you had it quilted on yours. Um, so that's for you. This is also a free pattern, the traveling leaves. And I also get that up on the shop. A couple things to get up. Um, and one more person, Colleen Moore. Uh, uh, Colleen, I loved seeing the cross stitch that you did in front of your fireplace. It was the fall frolic sampler. You had them all made into little pillows and put on the hearth in front of the fireplace. It just looked really cozy and fall-like, and I was really excited to see those. So um, I will direct message each of you, and you guys can pick stickers or a pattern. Um, yay! Uh, the other new thing that is up in the shop, uh, I did get back from the printer um, posies, table runner, and placemats. And so this is... Um, a table runner that's based on the the ring around the posies kind of posy right um but it's scaled down in size it's a uh, 42 and a half by 14 and a half inch table runner and then there's also four placemats so you can just make the placemats only the table runner only or their specs for if you want to make them both um the placemats are 18 and a half by 13 and a half and you can use a charm pack or you can use um fat eighths uh, or this is also great for scraps. This would be a really good scrappy project. So this is um, back from the printer now. This is up in the shop. Yay! Uh, I have redone fringe, and uh, it's the same basic design for fringe, but this is shipping with the Dandy Duo fabrics, which are going to be shipping next month. And for this one, I've actually added, there's a, a twin, a large square, and a lap. So there's more sizes now on this. The lap is 53 and three quarters inch square. The large square is 68 and a half inches square. And the twin is 68 and a half by 83 and a quarter. So um, three sizes now for fringe. And uh, partial eclipse is another new one. And so I will um, have to get this out and show you the quilt. I did it with um, curved corners on the finishing for it. And this is using the same um, curve size that's in uh, Mod Flower Box and Beanstalk. Uh, I like that, that size. Um, and I use my Creative Grids Circle Savvy Ruler to cut my circles. You could also use the paper template that is in the pattern to do that. Um, I liked this one. I think I have it here. I do. So I liked having this finished with one pointy corner and one curved corner. So that's my curved corner. And I think it'll look really nice up on the wall. I'm gonna see if I can figure out some wall space up in the office for that. Um, for this with the curved binding, I used the um, the thatched bias binding that Moda makes that's on the roll and it handled the curves really well. Um, I don't have the patience to make curved binding, my, or the bias binding myself, I always do straight. So it was great to be able to just have that on the roll. Um, any questions? <laughs> great. Hi, Shannon. Um, I also redid sliding Soji screens, and that one is coming in on Monday. Uh, and that will have, it's a similar size of the, more of like a large lap. And then there's also a full double and a queen size on sl sliding Soji screens. <laughs> sliding Soji screens. So that should be in on Monday. So a couple of things to get up in the shop. Um, does anybody 
have questions and I'm hoping that this is working out well for you. Oh, Mary, I'm so glad that you like partial eclipse. It was it was a really fun one to design. Um, Cause also, I don't think I explained with partial eclipse, there's three different background colors. So really what's happening in the background is just as important as what's happening in the blocks too. All right, um, I'm gonna be back on here on the 24th. So that's in two weeks. It'll be Friday morning, the 24th. I'll be going over row C on Oak Grove. Hopefully I'll have my leaf press um, finished just to share. And please keep posting things in the Facebook group. I, I love, love, love seeing what people post in there. It's really touching. And when people ask questions, um, thank you. It's a really great community. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.